Well, we kind of had a mini breakthrough. We've got people talking across the aisle and coming to some agreement. The agreement is that we don't want to totally waste the work that's already been done. We do need to find a path forward that we can support with a broad base of support. And so there's bipartisan conversations going on, some planning, some reaching out across to the other side of the river. This is a perfect example of how things are supposed to work, and I'm really proud of the work that a lot of people have done on this. Uh, we had a problem in our community that was a growing problem in all communities where um, uh, foot massage businesses that were not legitimate, that were a sometimes a cover for prostitution and sex trafficking, uh, were springing up in neighborhoods and causing severe nuisances and uh, some of the people involved in them were victims. They were victims of sex trafficking. Uh, so it was a fairly complicated problem and a new problem um, and so the neighborhoods got together, uh, local law enforcement got together, um, the city came to me and we crafted a bill to address these through the licensing. And this way it protects legitimate reflexologists and massage therapists while giving some tools at the local level to deal with something that is part of a broader problem. We do a lot along the I-5 corridor to address sex trafficking and prostitution because of the, because of the victims. Um, and this is a piece of that and it fits in with that overall um, multi-jurisdictional effort. So it came through unanimously from both the House and the Senate and was signed by the governor this week. It's a very complex issue. To give you a little bit of background, um, it, ha it, it was referred to as revenge porn. That's a little too simplistic. It has to do with the use of digital uh, images and personal images in a way to harass, extort, punish, uh, embarrass, um, and sometimes it puts people in really physical jeopardy. So it's a very complex issue. There's a lot of uh, concern here about unintended consequences. So we're still wordsmithing some pieces of it to make sure that it really works the way we want it to and that we still get a bill done this session. We divided the civil piece from the criminal piece. There is a continuum of both amount of harm and amount of distribution and impact. And so we have a criminal piece because some of the behavior, it fits right in with criminal behavior, but it's awkward because of the digital age and because of technology. So the criminal piece fits in that realm of things. The civil piece is where somebody um, experiences damages, uh, like somebody deliberately does this to keep them from getting a job or a promotion or to get them fired, um, and where it's not, not clearly criminal or where criminal has a higher burden of proof, but there's damages, there's intent, um, and this allows uh, somebody to recover those damages. We are going into special session and it's not because we haven't been working hard. Our budget writers and our negotiators have been working hard for a whole year on this. We are under a tremendous pressure to provide a lot of additional funding and education and we are between a rock and a hard place, frankly. We have lost a lot of revenue through internet sales, loss of tax revenue, limitations on property tax. We're climbing out of a really bad recession and so revenues are down and we've been underfunding a lot of programs in mental health and education for quite a long time and the Supreme Court has stepped in and relied heavily on our constitutional language to say that we're not doing our job. And so how we do that job when things are so complicated and there are so many opposite opinions about how much we need to do and how we need to do it and where to get the money, it's a complex issue. We have real legitimate differences of opinion and we're gonna to have to compromise. We're gonna to have to work that out and we're gonna to have to make a combination of probably some cuts that some of us won't like and some new revenue that other people won't like and we're trying to do as little harm to anybody as possible. But education is absolutely crucial for our state. It's crucial for our future, for our kids, for our economic health and vitality. So we have to go forward and I think that there's bipartisan will to do the very best job we can for the people that elected us.